Welcome to the first video in a long list of content we've got planned on the Pocket 6K Pro. I've covered a ton of these features in the Pocket 4K over the last year, but with new updates, new cameras, and new features, it's once again time to revisit the topic of exposing your camera properly. In this video, we will be talking about how to properly expose the Pocket 6K Pro and how to do it with false color. Also, we know that just recently Blackmagic Design updated it to give you a handy little chart to show you what each color means but we will still try to give you an in-depth explanation and talk about some good practices for exposing your footage properly with this camera. So let's get into it. Before we jump into this video, I wanted to take a second to invite you to be part of the Voyager community. Frame Voyager is all about finding awesome stories to tell and helping to find yours through our videos and I love getting to interact with people from all over the world, filmmakers, creative storytellers that are already part of this channel. So if you haven't subscribed to this channel, be sure to hit the notification bell and that subscribe button to keep up to date with all of our content. Now let's get back to the video. So for all of those who are just now getting into cinema cameras and bought the brand new Pocket 6K Pro, what exactly is false color and how does it work? False color is essentially just a way to interpret exposure on the screen of a camera, much like a histogram. Each color represents a different level of exposure and allows you to quickly see what is underexposed and what is overexposed in your shot. It's an incredibly useful tool to have when quickly trying to nail your exposure, and it's something that you really don't see a lot on DSLR or mirrorless cameras, though that seems to be a trend that might change here soon. To get started, you can enable your false color setting in two different ways. By tapping this function button on the top of the camera that is set as that by default. Or you can do it through the touch screen by tapping on the left corner of the screen and then tapping on this item that appears on the bottom and toggling it on. There are also options in the menu for having false color turned on for external displays. Now that this feature is enabled, you can see all of the different colors displayed on the in-camera screen as you move the camera around. Now, don't worry, if you see this, it will not bake the false color into your footage if you record with it on. It can still display over your footage and you can even watch it in playback if you like to. But again, don't worry because it will never bake into your footage. Now that we've learned how to turn it on, what do these colors mean and how should we interpret them? According to the Pocket 6K Pro manual, pink represents optimum exposure for lighter skin tones, while green is a good match to darker skin tones. By monitoring the pink or green false color when recording people, you can maintain consistent exposure for their skin tones. Similarly, when elements in your image change from yellow to red, that means that they are now overexposed. You should be able to see how this chart works to the left of the screen when you turn on your false color. In the new 7.3 Blackmagic camera update, they added this false color chart for a quick reference of what each color means. The first one you'll notice notice at the bottom is BDL, which is everything in purple, meaning you have black detail loss, which essentially means that you have absolutely no details at all in the purple parts of the exposure and you will not be able to recover it in post. NDBL is near black detail loss and is everything that lights up blue or dark gray. This shows you the parts of your footage that are close to losing all detail if you expose down any further. 18% MG is middle gray. This is represented with the color green and light gray. Middle gray is a tone that is perceptually about halfway between black and white on the lightness scale. In photography and printing, it is typically defined as 18% reflectance in visible light. MG plus one is one stop over middle gray. This is represented by pink to almost near white colors. Now, essentially adding one stop of light to your image means that you increase its brightness by 100%. Another way to put this is that you essentially double the amount of light your image has. Next, 80% WC is near white clipping. This is represented by a yellow and is a warning that if you expose your image any higher, you're at risk at losing details in the highlights, essentially just making it white. 95% WC is white clipping. This is represented by red and is letting you know that you are pretty much losing all details in the highlights of your image. All right, well, that section was a little heavy, but please feel free to ask any questions in the comments below about that section if I didn't explain it clearly enough. Let's talk about how I typically like to expose my image based off of these colors. Overexposing slightly. This is something that will probably come down to preference for a lot of you, but I've found 
over the course of time using the pocket cameras that I, I like how it looks and I think I get a little bit better image quality when I slightly overexpose the image based on the colors. So instead of just having it for pink on Caucasian skin, I'll make sure just to bump it up just enough to get out of that pink and into that really light gray. Now, this is a part of the video where I'll tell you to again, experiment on your own with different settings. What works for me will not always work for you. And quite honestly, you might be going for a different look than I do. The good thing as always, is that as long as you're generally around the right area, when it comes to exposure, you can always adjust in post to get your desired results. Exposing with dual native ISO for the best look. And we will be getting into this topic on a video coming out soon. Be sure to understand your dual ISO settings and how they affect your image. I would suggest at first, always sticking to your native ISO at 400 and 3200 ISO. I generally like to use 400 ISO and expose based on that, adjusting when needed or in a specific situation. I generally don't like to stray too far from native ISO because it will always produce the cleaner image, the closer you are to it. Now, like I said before, we will go into detail about how changing your ISO kind of changes your dynamic range around a little bit. And you should know what each one does because sometimes you will have to venture from that 400 to 3200 native ISOs. But for most situations, you're going to be around on that 400 and 3200 ISO and adjust up or down slightly if needed when the ND filters or iris settings can't get you to the exposure correctly. Using the ND filters to your advantage. The amazing thing about this Pocket 6K Pro is, and honestly, to me, what makes it worth it is the internal ND filters. This gives you an added advantage over the past Pocket Cinema cameras, eliminating the need to carry around filters for every lens. With a click of a button, you can keep your lens wide open in daylight conditions, helping even more with keeping your exposure online. That's about it for this video. Feel like I said something wrong, forgot something, or have a question? Comment below and I'll make sure to follow back up with you. Be sure to also check out our other content on the Pocket 4K cameras. We've got a lot of great content that also applies to the 6K Pro, and I've linked some of those below in the description. Until next time, this is John Owens with Frame Voyager.